Good day everybody, this is Chris of the Ancient Scholar and uh, today what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, do a quick demonstration of a physical principle and then go ahead and explain it. I've actually talked about it on other videos but I'm uh, going to be doing a lecture on uh, mucolytic and surfactant agents for an introductory pharmacology course that I'm teaching and I'd like to use this as a kind of a demonstration to uh, to demonstrate one of the principles that we, we deal with in uh, respiratory therapy as it applies to the alveoli. Um, so here I have a, it's a really, really easy device to make. I've taken the, the hard stem off of a uh, bottle of uh, soda or bottled water, cut it off, and I've taken a balloon and I put in a little bit of air in one balloon and attach it to one end, and then I just twist it to keep the air from, from moving out of it, and then I take, took another balloon and filled this balloon up with significantly more air. And the question that I'm going to ask you guys is, if I undo this balloon, once I untwist this balloon, what intuitively do you think is going to happen? Do you intuitively uh, think that the air is going to go from this one into this one, or from this one into this one? Well, I think the intuition for most people would be, well, there's more air in here, so clearly, it's going to want to go from higher to lower. That is the natural intuition. Well, let's see what happens. Huh. Interesting. So instead of uh, going from the larger one into the smaller one, the air moved from the smaller one into the larger one. So this is kind of contrary to what um, our intuition would tell us. And uh, the physical principle that is at work here is something known as the law of Laplace. And what the law of Laplace says is that the distending pressure of a sphere, so if I take something and it's a sphere and the pressure required to distend it or to keep it open is more or less equal to um, 2 times the surface tension, okay, whatever the, the tension is on the surface, two times the surface tension divided by the radius. Okay, so the radius is a distance from the center out. So if this is the center out to the, the outer perimeter, if you will. Okay, so the distending pressure equals two times the surface tension divided by the radius. So what that tell what does that tell us? Well, the surface tension, two times the surface tension is on in the uh, numerator, so clearly the higher the surface tension becomes, the higher uh, distending pressure I'm going to need to keep this sphere inflated. Uh, likewise, on in the uh, denominator, we have the radius. So what does this say? Well, there's an inverse relationship between uh, the denominator and you know, what we're looking at. In this case, we're looking at the distending pressure. And that is to say that the smaller the radius is going to be, the more distending pressure I'm going to need to exert to keep that sphere open. Um, likewise, the larger the radius, the lower distending pressure that I'm going to need to keep that um, sphere open. Well, in medicine, if we, if we model, we know that the alveoli aren't perfect spheres, but if we model the alveoli, like a sphere because they act very similar to a sphere, we can use the law of Laplace to explain what's going on and that is to say that if my alveoli are kind of shriveled up and collapsed and small, like, uh, for example have atelectasis going on, then it is going to take much more pressure to keep those alveoli open. And we, we saw that here in this experiment that the radius okay, of uh, this smaller balloon is that the radius is smaller, so the distending pressure was higher. So there's actually um, there's actually higher pressure here, and that's what forced air to go into the bigger balloon. Um, the law of Laplace. Um, now in respiratory therapy, the same thing. If my if my alveoli are, are rather small, and um, there's a lot of tension, then clearly it's going to take a lot of surf, a lot of uh, distending pressure to get those alveoli to open, and that's going to increase our work of breathing. And this is actually something that's not uncommon to see in uh, neonatal patients, uh, because as we know, the first, uh, the last organ rather to mature, um, organ system to mature in fetal development are the lungs, simply because we don't need the lungs in utero because we receive um, uh, oxygen nutrients and carbon dioxide uh, 
disposal uh, occurs through the umbilical co uh, cord and the placenta. We don't need our lungs They're until we're born. So really the last thing to really mature in field development is the lungs and when babies are born premature, of course, they their type 1, or specifically their type 2 alveolar pneumocytes are uh, born immature and they may not have actually begun to produce surfactant. And surfactant, as we know, decreases surface tension. And the law of Laplace tells us that if we can decrease the surface tension, then the distending pressure needed to keep that sphere, that alveoli open, the alveolus open, is uh, going to be much lower. So clearly, if babies are born premature and they don't make surfactant, uh, they have two things going against them. First of all, they have higher surface tension because surfactant decreases surface tension. Well, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, because the surface tension is high, that's going to cause the alveoli to want to collapse. And because the alveoli are collapsed, the radius is going to be smaller, and it's going to be even harder to get those alveoli open. So it's kind of a double whammy with a, a baby, a premature infant. And, of course, one of the things we can do is we can administer surfactant therapy. Now, the law of Laplace can also help us understand what happens in patients that have massive atelectasis. For example, patients that develop ARDS, uh, part of some of the, the issues that they can develop of course, due to the atelectasis, of course, is, um, can be explained at least in part through the agency of the law of Laplace. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.